Hello and good afternoon. Thank you so much, Billy. Billy is really good at what he does, isn't he? He's just smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Akil. You're welcome. Hey, everyone, welcome. And uh, I, he said my name is Akil Bernard. But before we jump into the presentation and I start sharing screens and all of that, I would just really love to get a feel for who is in the room. Uh, so if you can do me uh, the, in the justice of just dropping your lived experience, what you do for work, and where you are uh, dialing in from into the chat, uh, that would be really helpful. I am dialing in by way of Houston, Texas. Um, and uh, it's a little bit later for, him, for me here in the day, but super excited to be here with you all and hopeful that you guys really enjoyed today's presentation. So go ahead and drop those in there and I will take a look at it throughout our throughout my presentation. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And we can go ahead and get started. All right, so one more second here for me. I'm trying to make sure that I have a clear view of my screen. All right, and can you all see my screen well on your end, Billy? Awesome. Uh, so welcome to Empowering uh, Local Communities Through Peer Support, a Pathway to Sustainable Development Goals. A little bit about me. Uh, I would, oh, there we go. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Akil J. Bernard. And as Billy said, I am the Community Development Manager at Impact Hub Houston. Uh, so what is Impact of Houston? Impact of Houston is a 501c nonprofit organization that holds space for change makers to be better seen, heard, and valued. We are one of 110 organizations, also called Impact Hubs, across the globe in 60 different countries. And in each of these Impact Hubs, what we hold space for and what we focus on is helping change makers to have a place to work on the projects that they are really passionate about uh, around creating the change that they hope to see in the world. So my hope for today is that you can actually put yourself into the shoes of being a change maker. So for the sake of today, I'm going to be referencing everyone in the room as a change maker. Hopefully that is a word that feels um, relatively close to you and that you can identify with because you guys are all doing such amazing work in the fields that you're in. Uh, and something else about me, I'm a certified professional coach with the IPEC School of Coaching. Uh, so that basically means I hold space to help people find clarity in their lives and to align with their purpose. Um, so that's something that I do as well. And then I'm also a mental health first aider. And something that's not on here that I'm really proud about is I'm actually, I got certified in California as a peer support specialist uh, with Libby, who also works for SHARE. And that happened while I was going through the pandemic and was looking for, you know, just different avenues for me to sharpen my coaching. So a little bit about me and happy to share more um, if you want to connect beyond uh, today to learn a little bit more. All right, so this afternoon, what will we be covering? So this afternoon, we will be discussing an introduction to the Sustainable Development Goals. We're going to talk a little bit about what they are, who created them, and why they are important. Uh, so again, I would just really like to, to scan the room and get a feel for the term Sustainable Development Goals. How many of you in here have actually heard of the term Sustainable Development Goals? If you have, and you're familiar with them, go ahead and drop a one in the chat. If you are somewhat familiar, you've heard about it, but you don't know too much about it, drop a two. And if you are absolutely new to the term sustainable development goal, and you are excited to learn more about it, go ahead and drop a three for me. And let me take a quick look. All right, okay, got some twos, got some two, and a three. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're also going to cover today uh, the five SDGs that are directly impacted by the work of the peer support workforce. So you're going to see as we go onto a few other slides moving forward that there are 17 of these goals. We're only going to be talking about five of them. Uh, we only have so many, uh, some so much time on this call, and I really wanted to make sure that we highlighted the five that were most relevant to the topic for today. Um, but you will also have access to this presentation as well and different links 
uh, that will take you directly to more information about each, uh, about the sustainable development goals so you can continue to learn more beyond today. Uh, we'll also be covering how peer support can be used to empower local communities and support the achievements of the sustainable development goals. And finally, to wrap things up with a nice little bow, uh, we're going to be talking about next steps on how each of you can implement the SDGs into the work you do every day so that you can 10x your impact. Okay, so a nice full hour where we're going to be talking about a lot of great things and hopefully you leave this conversation feeling empowered and inspired to go forth and do uh, or continue doing the amazing work that you're already doing. All right, let's see here. Whoops. All right, so an introduction to the sustainable development goals. What are they? So the UN uh, is the mastermind behind the creation of the sustainable development goals. The sustainable deve development goals are the blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. There are 17 global goals and 169 targets attached to these 17 goals to stimulate action in areas of critical importance for humanity and for planet. Uh, so I'm going to take a minute here and just have you look at the screen and you will see on here these badges that are attached to each one of the SDGs. We have an SDG ranging from no poverty, we have uh, gender equality, we have affordable and clean energy, life below water, peace and justice, strong institu institu institutions, sorry. Uh, so these 17 goals, if you really take a, a bird's eye lens to them, cover so many of the different things that not just one country is facing, but all countries are facing. So these goals are put into place to give us that are doing important change maker work in the communities that we serve and the communities that we love a North Star so that the work that we're doing, we have a way to improve our storytelling, make it more impactful, but it's also giving us uh, a direction for us to work in. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today is how can we use some of these goals to really 10X the work that we're doing as peer workforce specialists. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals were created in 2015, and they were actually put together in place of eight goals that were considered uh, before that, before 2015, and those goals were called the Millennium Development Goals. So the UN, from time to time, get together and they put together these goals to make sure that folks that are really looking to be the change in the world actually have that North Star to work with. It's very amazing, exciting stuff put into place by a, a phenomenal group of people that really believe in making the world a better place. So these 17 goals are put in place and targeted for change to happen by 2030. So we've been working at it for a while. And then when 2030 rolls around, we're going to assess all 17 goals. And then there's going to be a report put out that basically says, this is what we've accomplished over the last couple of years. And I'm sure they're gonna put a fresh new set of goals in place as well. All right, I'm gonna pause there just to see if anyone has any questions so far in the chat. Billy, any questions for me? Nothing yet. Okay, awesome. All right, so the first um, thing we're gonna look at here today is the five goals that I believe, and again, this is just my belief, if you talk to different people, if you look at the 17 goals, you may find more goals that are directly linked to the peer support workforce. But from my research and from my time spent just putting it together and really trying to find which five speak best to the work that we do as peer support specialists, I came up with these five. So SDG number one, no poverty. SDG number three, good health and well being. SDG number four, quality education. SDG number eight, decent work and economic, economic growth. And then SDG 10, reduced inequalities. So before I move on, I just really want to get uh, a feel for how you, how you, how each of you feel about these five goals. I, do you feel like you are aware of? how each of these directly links to peer support. Are you a little bit confused? I just, you can go ahead and drop it in the chat. Like, where are you right now on just 
the excitement for what we're about to talk about. Okay. I'm looking for the chat, Billy, but my chat has seen up. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Excited to learn more. And I agree, yes, these five are definitely critical to the work that we're doing as, as peer support specialists, agree. All right, so we're gonna go through each of them and we're gonna have a nice little conversation about each. All right, so let's talk a little bit about SDG number one, no poverty. So the 2030 Global Goals Agenda acknowledges that eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions, including extreme poverty is the greatest global challenge and also an indispensable requirement for sustainable development. SDG number one is the foundation of so many other goals. And as you learn more about the SDG model, you're going to see how a lot of them overlap and some of them directly impact others. Um, and with SDG one being the foundation of the sustainable development goals, it's really important that we talk about that. Um, so I'm going to go through some priority actions on poverty eradication, and then we're going to look at how directly does the work that we do as peer support work for as a peer support workforce, how it affects this particular goal. So bullet point one, uh, promote financial inclusion by expanding access to affordable financial services, such as savings accounts, credit and insurance. Uh, particularly among low income and marginalized populations, right? So this, uh, these are goals already in place by multiple organizations across the globe that are working towards making sure that SDG 1 is accomplished by 2030. Uh, strengthening the resilience of poor and vulnerable communities by investing in basic social infrastru infrastructure, such as health and education services, housing and water and sanitation systems, making sure that everyone, no matter where they live or no matter what walk of life they come from, have access to the basic essentials to survive and live a healthy life. Promote sustainable agriculture and rural development to promote inclusive growth and reduce poverty and inequality in rural areas. We're not just talking about rural areas here, um, domestic to the US, but this goal is looking at uh, doing a lot of work and setting a, the tone for work that's being done in countries like uh, in, in the continent of Africa and countries like Sierra Leone um, and countries like Lagos, uh, different parts of Mexico, where there is this inequalities and disparities where poverty is a lot more prevalent. Um, so as you do more research around SDG number one, you're going to see a lot of reports from different organizations that are doing work around this particular SDG as well. Uh, fostering inclusive and sustainable economic growth by promoting innovation, entrepreneurship, and technical technological advancement, particularly in sectors such as renewable energy and digital technologies. So how are we using renewable energy and technology to accomplish this goal. These are all tied to different targets um, that you can, you can research when you look at SDG number one. For the sake of today, we definitely want to zone in and have a conversation around how does peer support programming impact SDG one directly? So here are a few bullet points. Um, so peer support programs provide a safe and supportive environment for individuals who are struggling with poverty, homelessness, or other forms of deprivation to share their stories and experiences and gain strength, hope, and encouragement from others. This I have seen for myself while I was living in California, the amazing people that I spent eight weeks with learning more about peer support programming and how it can change lives. I heard story after story of just resilience built from people that were homeless, were dealing with different um, different challenges in their life from addiction to just mental health and how their connection to the, to the um, to peer support program and helped save their life. It helped give them a, a pathway to employment. It helped to get them back on their feet. And they were sharing these stories with such an open heart and it was inspiring for myself and inspiring for other people that were also there as well. So when we're talking about eradicating poverty, that's a heavy lift 
across the globe for us to say we're going to end poverty in all its forms. But I can definitely applaud the peer workforce for, for doing its fair share of making sure that, you know, we're getting people back on their feet and eradicating poverty, at least in the circles that we serve. Uh, so bullet point number two, peer support programs help to reduce stigma and social isolation which are major barriers to accessing healthcare, education, and other essential services. How many people have we met in the, in the peer support workforce that have you know, gone to the dentist for the first time because of a peer support program, have access to doctors that want to help, that are in the spaces that they're in and can actually you know, meet them where they're at, where they feel comfortable to provide care. This is what we're talking about when we say peer support programming can help reduce stigma and social isolation, which are major barriers uh, to healthcare. It should not matter in the healthcare space if you have a mental health challenge, if you, if you are gay, straight, if you are homeless or not, care is care and it's a divine right for everyone. So we should be unbiased when it comes to providing care. We should be unbiased when it comes to providing you know, safe places for people to get access to healthcare. But there are so many um, biases at play. There's so much stigma in that, in that space. And we're hopeful that more doctors are getting trained on the SDGs and the work that they're doing so that they can meet um, the folks that need the support where they're at. So that's something that we're hoping to accomplish here as well. Uh, peer support programs provide opportunities for skill building, education, and training, which can help individuals to increase their income and gain greater economic stability. The peer support programs that are across the U.S. are creating employment for others. Um, it's heavily based on providing employment for those that traditionally may find an issue finding employment because of their past, because of their experiences. And here you have a program that is celebrating their lived experiences and their, their triumph and allowing them to share these lived experiences with others so that others can be helped in the process. And on top of that, creating a pathway for them to seek out employment. But those people that are interested in moving throughout the ranks of the peer support workforce, starting their own programs, starting their own businesses, um, creating uh, mentorship programs, different types of different avenues. You see all of that under the peer support workforce and it continues to make this work even more important. It continues to elevate it beyond what is just the standard, come in and let me talk to you and let me share my lived experiences. People are getting work and moving into different aspects of their lives which is really, really an inspiring place to be and an inspiring thing to see. And then there's peer support programs promote social cohesion, reduce inequalities and build more inclusive communities, all of which are essential for achieving SDG number one. So creating thriving communities where people feel seen, heard and valued, you are hearing no shortage of that in the peer support workforce. I, I have friends that I've, did the program with uh, about a year ago that I still touch base with, and they're all thriving in their fields. Some have gone on to become facilitators, some have gone on to become coaches, some have stayed within the peer support workforce and are doing work there. This is the realm of possibilities with the foundation of what peer support programming is and the importance of it uh, continues to build. And super excited to see where, where it goes next. Uh, Billy, any questions so far or am I, am I doing pretty good? <laughs> You're still doing fine, Akil. All right, awesome. All right, so let's move on to, oops, SDG number three, good health and well-being. So the 2030 Global Goals Agenda acknowledges good health and well-being as essential in the promotion of healthy lifestyles, preventative measures, and modern efficient healthcare for everyone. This is a goal near and dear to my heart because of the work that I'm doing, not only as the community development manager at Impact of Houston, but as a certified life coach as well, and somebody that has dealt with health disparities in his life. So some priority actions that can be taken to increase good health and well-being. 
increasing funding for healthcare and investing in healthcare infrastructure, training healthcare professionals, and improving medical supply chains uh, that will all contribute to better health outcomes. This is a heavier lift for those of us that are not healthcare professionals, but want to see a change in healthcare. So how can you implement this change? It, you can implement this change by writing letters to your government officials, by you know, creating more awareness around the disparities that are happening in the healthcare system. There's so many different angles that you can attack this particular, um, this particular goal. Another angle that we can look at is uh, or another, pri another priority action to be taken, sorry. Ensure equal access to healthcare. This means increasing healthcare coverage to ensure that everyone, regardless of their ability to pay, has access to quality healthcare services. You hear this time and time again. You hear it a lot when elections come up. You hear the, the desire for folks to make healthcare available to everyone. And while we're not where we would hope to be, there's still so many different things that are happening that are influencing this decision um, on the global on the global stage as well as on the local stage as well. Uh, promoting healthy lifestyles, encouraging people to adopt healthy lifestyles such as regular exercise, healthy eating habits, avoiding harmful substances like smoking and drugs, and practicing safe sex can help non-communicable non-communicable diseases and improve overall health. Um, encouraging people to actually live healthier lifestyles um, through peer support is something that I see happening consistently in this space. Encouraging people to take care of themselves both mentally, physically, and emotionally by sharing their lived experiences of when they too did not do that, but where they're at now and how it's how important it is for them to live a healthier lifestyle and to stay clear of things that may you know trigger you and put you back into or break your sobriety or put you back into a space where you know you you may feel like you're not making as much progress as you should there's so many different things that come from just having a clear mind and a clear approach to exercise and healthy eating and healthy diet healthy nutrition in general um, all of these things are covered under uh, good health and well-being, SDG, SDG 3. Um, increase access to mental health care. Uh, mental health is an important component of overall health and well-being, and increasing access to mental health care services can improve health outcomes for many individuals. When we're talking about peer support programming, health care um, is one thing, but then mental health care is another. And they're somewhat beautifully tied together, but making uh, access to mental health services, people that are therapists that look like you or have your lived experiences that can actually understand on, uh, on a personal level the struggles that you've experienced is a good place to start. Um, so you'll see more about that um, if you do more research around good health and well-being and how it's tied to mental health. There are numerous, uh, there are numerous studies that are being done right now around just how mental health plays a significant role in the SDG model. Um, we're not going to talk about it too much today, but you're going to see it come up in other slides as well. All right, so how does peer support programming impact SDG 3? I talked in a lot of those prior, but I'll run through these as well. Uh, peer support programming can help to improve access to health care for marginalized populations thereby contributing to the reduction of health inequalities, which is a key objective of SDG 3. Another, peer support programs help to reduce stigma and discrimination against people with mental illnesses, promoting social and emotional well-being, which is crucial to the overall health and individuals uh, of individuals and communities. Um, then there's peer support programming can create sustainable interventions as it facilitates a transfer of knowledge and skills between participants, which can be passed on to future generations, promoting health and well-being over long term. So when we're talking about encouraging folks to live a healthier lifestyle, it's not just in the now, but encouraging them to pass this lineage down through their through generations that to come. So encouraging our parents to start talking to their kids about the importance of of, of safe sex and the importance of you know taking care of their bodies and exercise and proper nutrition eradicating things like uh, food deserts and such you'll see that 
where one know, is able to know better, they're able to do better. And SDG three is a big component of that. Uh, there's also peer support interventions can be tailored to meet the specific needs of different communities, thereby addressing existing disparities in healthcare, um, access and infrastructure. This contributes to the overall goal of strengthening the health system in under uh, resourced regions and promoting universal access to quality health care. So big lift, but the little things that we're doing in the peer support workforce is helping us to get closer and closer to this. So let's talk a little bit about quality education. So the 2030 Global Goals Agenda acknowledges quality education for all as fundamental to creating a peaceful and prosperous world. Education gives people the knowledge and skills uh, need to stay healthy, get jobs, and foster resilience. So some priority actions that can be taken to ensure quality education. Uh, improve the quality of education at all levels with a focus on effective teaching and learning so that all students acquire the knowledge and skills needed to succeed in life and work. In today's session, we have all reverted back to being students. We're all here to acquire information from different subject matter experts, from different people within their fields. Um, and the, uh, the overall agenda is how can we take all of this research and all of this information and apply it to our lives in real time? So in, in that said, we're all students today, right? So we're not just talking about you know, the traditional school settings of tertiary education or high school or college, you know, just making sure that education is available to all, um, even so in the peer in the peer support workforce as well. Uh, enhancing the relevance of education to the needs of the labor market and society by strengthening and partnerships between education providers, employers, and communities. Uh, so implementing quality education, not just in the traditional settings, but also in the jobs that we do, um, and also in the communities that we serve as well. Right. So the, when, you, when we talk about education and community, we're talking about oftentimes what we do here at Impact Hub, which is we put on a lot of different workshops that help people bridge the gap between where they are and where they hope to be. And then we also you know, take the angle of just making sure that education is at the forefront of everything that we're doing, so that people are empowered to know better and do better. Uh, support teachers by improving their training, working conditions, and professional development opportunities, including the use of technology and innovative, innovative teaching methods. Um, Self-explanatory there as well, just supporting our teachers. They have a very difficult job in itself. So SDG 4, I know we can't talk about education without speaking about our educators and how we can support them in the work that they do. Ensure that education is inclusive and promotes diversity by addressing the needs of learners with disabilities, in dis in indigenous people, refugees, and other marginalized groups as well. So SDG 4, these are some priority actions currently in place uh, to help ensure that quality education is available to all. All right, so how does peer support programming impact SDG number four? So peer support programming contributes to the development of critical thinking and problem solving, uh, problem solving skills essential for achieving SDG four and its goal of promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all. My peer support program that I went through was six to seven weeks long, I believe. And there was so much information in there um, that we learned over those seven weeks that at the end of it, I felt not like a subject matter expert, but I felt like I had opened a brand new book and had so much to go and implement and share with people. I actually was speaking to my wife around just the importance of peer support programming and just all of the amazing benefits that came from being in such an amazing program, all the lived experiences that people had shared, the lens of mental health, uh, the lens of recovery, um, which is something that I had not experienced directly. I, had, I know people that are in recovery. I know people that are dealing with addiction, but there's the the core of it and understanding what leads to that. You know, there's so much education out there that the peer support programs are bridging the gap about, and it's making it 
feasible and palatable for people to learn and understand this. Uh, peer support programming can contribute to the development of a learning society, one where all individuals have access to educational opportunities and resources that enable lifelong learning and personal growth. Uh, creating community around learning. That's what I think about when I hear peer support workforce. And also making sure that people are understanding of, we don't expect you to be a subject matter expert right away. We're giving you the tools so that you can actually articulate your lived experiences and help inspire people to know better and do better themselves. Peer support programming can also promote intercultural understanding and dialogue, building bridges between diverse communities and encouraging global citizenship. I was born and raised in a beautiful country uh, called Trinidad and Tobago. I moved to the States right when I turned 21. Uh, that was back in 2011. So safe to say when I moved here, I my understanding of mental health, and social impact and just all of the things that I was learning was new to me. Um, in the Caribbean, there's not much conversation around mental health and there should be. And my goal is to go back and introduce them to just different information, different resources that they can use uh, to, to help create more awareness and help destigmatize conversations like mental health, help promote the implementation of peer support programming in different countries um, like Trinidad and Tobago or other Caribbean islands where these topics are somewhat taboo and not fully embraced just yet. Uh, peer support programming can also enhance the capacity of individuals to make well-informed decisions, supporting SDG number four's goal of empowering learners to become active global citizens who can make positive and transformative change to their communities and to the world at large. The, the lift of peer support uh, specialists is so important. And the goal for today is to give you some new verbiage, uh, to give you some visuals, to give you some, some additional information to implement into your everyday work so that the work that you're doing is 10x and that you have a North Star to work towards as well. Questions so far, Billy, or are we doing good? You're still doing good, Akil. All right. Uh, SDG number eight, uh, decent work and economic growth. The 2030 Global Goals Agenda acknowledges decent work and economic growth as the foundation for promoting sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, uh, full and productive employment, and this decent work for all. Uh, some priority actions that can be taken to increase decent work and economic growth include promoting economic growth through job creation, calling on government and organizations to work towards creating more job opportunities to spur economic growth. Um, we're talking about in every state that we're in, you are having conversations around how do we create more employment uh, for those in need? How do we create more of a steady um, economy? It is so many different conversations that are always happening. I know here in Texas, it's a common one as well. How are we, you know, keeping the money within the state? How are we, you know, creating more opportunities for those in need um, so to work and to take care of their families and their loved ones? The conversation is never ending. Uh, advancing decent work for all. All workers should have access to fair and decent working conditions, including fair wages, safe working conditions, and freedom from discrimination and harassment while at work. Encouraging innovation and entrepreneurship and in innovation and entrepreneurship are key drivers of growth and job creation. Um, encouraging government to incentivize innovation and support entrepreneurs in, be, in bringing new ideas to market. You're gonna hear a lot of that uh, from me. I worked in the corporate space. I now work uh, for Impact of Houston, and this is what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, me moving into the accelerator incubator space for social impact, I see it every day. I see people with amazing ideas that just need support and need guidance around taking their idea from inception to full-fledged, full I'm in business, I'm now creating employment for others, and I'm con contributing to my economy as well. So uh, you will see uh, in, the other, in the next slide how peer support program is directly impl impacting that as well. 
promoting sustainable economic growth uh, should be sustainable and inclusive, uh, taking into account environmental considerations and ensuring that benefits of growth are shared widely across all segments of society. When we're talking about economic growth, the conversation of uh, equity, uh, inclusion, and diversity is a must-have, right? Because we're talking about people that are passed on opportunities because of the color of their skin, because of their lived experiences, or because you know people are focusing more on the biases instead of what they can actually do. So how does peer support programming impact SDG number eight? Uh, peer support can alleviate stress and provide mental health support for workers, contributing to a healthy workforce and improved job sustainability. We talked about that earlier. Um, peer support uh, is creating an avenue for employment for those with lived experiences, those that have probably have been incarcerated or those that are were dealing with addiction and are now living a sober life. These people traditionally per standard guidelines have a difficult time seeking out employment. There's no shortage of you know, different um, studies that were done that basically said these people are discriminated against and sometimes um, passed on opportunities when they should be given a fighting chance. The peer support workforce is hoping to bridge the gap on that by creating employment simply for people to share their lived experiences and inspire others. Uh, peer support groups offer a supportive environment for aspiring entrepreneurs and self-employed individuals to develop and expand their businesses in the peer support workforce, contributing to economic development. How many people do we know that went from being either homeless or from you know, dealing with addiction uh, to now starting their own business, to now being a peer support a uh, specialist or being a peer support business owner, uh, being a peer support um, advocate or starting a mentorship program, starting a nonprofit that's directly linked uh, to helping those in need. There's no shortage of those success stories and the peer support program allows for the, all of that to, to happen. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer collaboration can improve knowledge sharing and foster innovation, promoting economic growth and sustainable development. Uh, you're going to hear that term a lot. You're going to see that term a lot as you do more research around the SDGs. Um, sustainable development is key uh, for a just and a more sustainable world that is thriving. Um, peer support programs can improve workplace culture, reducing turnover rates, and contributing to sustainable job growth. One of the things I would like to see more of is peer support programs implemented into corporate organizations. There are a few, um, but they can definitely stand to be an increase in this particular space. Um, what a lot of corporate organizations will see from this is that uh, this can actually help with job retention. It can actually help people to, to be more aligned with the work that they're doing if they're able to share in a safe space you know, their lived experiences with others that also share that similar walk of life. Uh, peer support can bridge the skills gap between employers and job seekers, providing opportunities for upskilling and career development, leading to improved job quality and economic growth as well. Akil, there's a question in the chat um, okay. about the, are you going to make the uh, PowerPoint presentation available? Yes. The PowerPoint uh, presentation was sent over to share and is available with the links included. Thank you. And if you want to copy directly because you don't want to wait, <laughs> you can always connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, my name is Akil Bernard on there, or you can shoot me an email. Uh, it's akil.bernard at impacthub.net, and I will send over a copy right over to you. Again, I'll give you that email one more time. It's Akil, A-K-2-E's, one L, period, Bernard, B-E-R-N-A-R-D, at impacthub.net. All right, so let's talk a little bit about SDG number 10, reduced inequalities. Uh, the 2030 Global Goals Agenda acknowledges that reducing inequalities and ensuring that no one is left behind 
are integral to achieving the sustainable development goals. Some priority actions that can be taken to reduce, uh, to reduce inequalities include increasing access to healthcare. Uh, access to quality healthcare is essential in reducing health inequalities and ensuring that everyone can achieve their full potential. Uh, fostering inclusive economic growth. Promoting inclusive economic growth entails investing in infrastructure, job creation, and supporting small businesses to ensure that all individuals have equal access to economic opportunities. Uh, addressing system, uh, systemic barriers. Uh, it is important to identify and address systemic barriers that prevent certain groups or marginalized groups from accessing resources and opportunities, such as unequal distribution of wealth and power. We see that in all aspects of our of this U.S. culture, you see it from indigenous people to African Americans. There's so many marginalized groups that are not having the same equal access to different resources. Right? It's almost like their finish line is always being moved. Um, as we we talk about peer support, um, the peer support workforce and people that are in our peer support programs, uh, this this applies to them as well. You know, I mean, not having fair and and just opportunities to employment as they would want, um, having people you know you know sh shun them because of their lived experiences. Is just so many different things that are happening in the world around reduced inequalities and the peer support programs that we are all a part of, and the work that we're doing is helping to reduce uh, those inequalities. Encouraging diversity and inclusion, promoting diversity and inclusion through policies and social norms help to reduce stigma and promote equitable and respectful societies. All right, so let's talk a little bit. Sorry, folks. Oops. I'm skipping ahead. I apologize. So let's talk a little bit about. Seems like my slide is doubled. So let's talk a little bit around how peer support programming um, helps to reduce inequalities. I apologize. It looks like my slide doubled on this page. Um, but when we're talking about reduced inequalities and peer support programming, when you as someone that's looking for support signs up for a peer support program, it's yes, you have to share some information around, you know, like, you know, what it is you're dealing with at that current moment, you know, what you're looking to accomplish. You probably have to share some more personal details so that we're able to find the support uh, to get you the support that you need. It isn't discriminant it isn't discriminatory in practice if that if that's the word I'm looking for it's about helping you to get back on your feet helping you to learn from others and their lived experiences so that you can know better and do better um we're talking about creating peer support programs where people are feeling safe so you may have peer support programs that are all female in nature because women have experience you know just horrible things at the hands of men and are not fully comfortable with being in a group with men. So you have peer support programs that are specifically designed for women, or peer support programs that are specifically designed for teens, or peer support programs that are specifically designed for folks of a particular group that want to be comfortable sharing their lived experiences with people that look like them, that feel like, you know, that they have a certain common bond with you'll see more of those programs being created to help with reduced inequalities, creating the sense of belonging in the different programs that we have. These are all things that you're probably going to see coming down in the pipeline if they're not already in existence. So how can you get more involved with the SDGs? Here are a couple of bullet points uh, to kind of get you on your way. Uh, educate yourself on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and how they apply to your community. Incorporate SDGs into your organization's mission statement or objectives to ensure it aligns with the SDGs. Uh, this is a good opportunity for you to you know, speak to your senior leaders and have them maybe put a sustainable development goal poster 
into your break room so that people can actually learn more about the work that you're doing. If you are getting a, a business plan together, implementing some of these SDGs into your business plan can help to 10x your storytelling and to help you feel more connected. Um, have others that are that you're pitching to or talking to feel more connected to the work that you're doing. Uh, use the SDGs as a framework for community-based interventions and program development. There are committees that are being built around each of the SDG goals. Um, and if, you're, if there's a, a, a need for a committee to be built in your particular state or in your city, um, it doesn't take much for you to say, hey, I'm going to start a meetup group around SDG number one or SDG number, number eight or SDG number 10 or four. Uh, and then bring people together to start having conversation around how might we be able to move the needle on this goal by 2030. Uh, engage community members and stakeholders in SDG awareness and ra awareness raising activities, attending the different events. In the month of November, there is an entire week uh, dedicated to the global goals and the sustainable development goals. There's no shortage of events happening where people are talking about SDGs and the work that they're doing, reporting um, to the masses on just how their companies have actually been working towards creating more sustainable change by 2030. So you can definitely seek out more of those. It just takes a quick Google for you to, to you know, be exposed to those particular types of events. Uh, build partnerships with other organizations and community groups to work towards SDG implementation. Uh, monitor progress towards the SDGs in your work and report on outcomes. Sometimes it's as simple as sharing a, a Facebook post or an Instagram post that says, hey, this month we're celebrating uh, the, the work that's being done around eradicating poverty and then sharing some detailed bullet points about that. It just If you are sharing, people are learning. And let's imagine what we can do in the peer support workforce if more people are having conversations around how we are creating change on such a huge global on a huge global level advocate for local policies uh, policies that support sdg uh, implementation you know writing letters to your government officials you know making sure that they are that we're holding them accountable to delivering on these sdg goals you know it's just a matter of creating awareness some of our government officials they know of the un but they're not focused on sdg goals and they should be um, using your voice and advocacy skills to raise awareness about the SDGs in your community and amongst policymakers. We just talked about that. Uh, considering ways to integrate environmental sustainability into your programs and interventions. Um, creating the verbiage around SDGs and the importance of them in your peer support group sessions that you're doing. In, encouraging our peer support specialists to actually start talking about things like how can we collectively you know, eradicate poverty or how can we reduce inequalities using some of the verbiage in the work that we're doing is a great place to start. Uh, continuously uh, learn and stay updated on developments in SDG implementation in your community and globally. Just being aware and being in the know is a brilliant place to be. Um, so that brings us to the end of uh, my presentation. Um, again, my name is Akil Bernard, Community Development Manager, a Certified Professional Coach over at Impact Hub Houston. And I would love to open it up now for questions, um, insights, anything that anyone is feeling uh, so inclined to share. Now is a good time to, to send some questions my way. So I have a question. Uh, so we went through five uh, of the SDGs. We also looked at the slide with 17. Um, so I'm going to put it back onto this slide and just kind of open it up. Uh, when you look at this very colorful slide of SDG badges, are there any of these that stand out to you that you feel a strong connection to? 
And that's for everyone that is uh, in the room today for the session. Climate action. Billy, I love that climate action is the one that you picked. Um, that's a conversation that we're always uh, having here in the office at Impact of Houston. It's just how can we move the needle on climate action? There's so much that can be done. There's so much that we can do and that we're already doing. So I love that for you. Appreciate it. Now you can take this badge and you can put it in to the work that you're doing, into the conversations that you're having. Um, uh, you can now have a, a North Star that you can work towards as well. And if you check out the um, the link in the presentation um, or you Google SDGs, um, you can actually find so much more information on each of these. And it will help break down each of the targets for each one of the goals. It will help you connect to other people that are already doing work in the different spaces around each goal. So much information out there. Thank you, Akil. No problem. Ms. Berger, zero hunger. I couldn't agree more. Um, I actually thought about putting uh, this particular badge uh, in the presentation as one of the five um, because peer support programs do such a good job of connecting uh, folks in need to different resources by way of food banks or different programs that are dedicated to helping to make sure that people go to sleep with you know food in their stomachs and actually have resources or access to resources beyond just the day that they are at the shelter or they are at their um, peer support program. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Um, any more questions? Anything that anything anybody wanted me to go over or spend more time explaining? Seems like there are no questions and there were bullet points in here that are, I really wanted to put bullet points so that we can touch on each point. So um, I guess I, I have, have a, a question. question. Yes, ma'am. I have, I have a, question. a question. I know you had focused on five of the um, the introduction, but how would you have it explained 16, number 16? Number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. This was another one that I, I, I had put into the presentation. So when we're talking about peace, justice, and strong institutions, we're talking about all of the civil work that's happening around you know, eradicating racism, around talks around, you know, what does it look like, you know, to, to have the conversation around. Uh, reparations for African Americans, um, creating uh, awareness around all of the, the the work that's being done right now um, around police brutality and all of the injustices that we're seeing in that space. Um, peace and justice and strong institutions also speaks to the inequalities that are happening uh, around the pay scale uh, for women uh, in the workplace, um, where women are not making uh, the same amount of money as men. Um, especially if they are Hispanic women or African women of African uh, American descent. There's so many different things that foster into peace, justice, and strong institutions, right? Also, you're looking at just, you know, how does the justice system advocate uh, for, for citizens? Um, you're looking at just how can we make the mass incarceration that's happening amongst, you know, different marginalized groups, a thing of the past, right? How can we get these people the support that they need uh, in the communities that they're from? You know, there's so much different things that that fall into there. But the the this particular goal has more targets attached to it because it touches on just so many different aspects. You know, there's so much in there. I think this particular um, goal has maybe maybe like 10 different uh, targets attached to it. Akil, Giselle has her hand raised. Yes, Giselle. Hi, um, I have a question. 
question about, so I understand that these are UN goals, right? Yeah. And the, there's a lot of organizations, obviously, part of the UN. How do these transfer to the United States? Do you know if the U.S. has a prioritization of some of these? And if so, are they... Um, I'm thinking, is there any like grants or funding around aligning to some of these uh, goals for, you know, smaller nonprofits um, that we could take advantage of? Yeah, absolutely. I love that question. Um, the U.S. is actually one of the country, the countries that is very active with the SDG goal model, right? There's so many different organizations, so many different nonprofits, so many different government organizations that have implemented the SDG model onto their website, into their work that they're doing, into um, their training models. There are people that have actually revamped their entire training uh, to implement more of the SDG verbiage into it. So there's so much different uh, angles that you can work. Um, as far as grants, I know the there are grants that are, are specifically designed with SDGs in mind, but they're not directly saying, hey, if you do this, it's going to directly impact the SDGs. But the grants are being built based on the different target goals, um, the different targets that are attached to the SDG goals. So um, I think a quick Google will help you to, um, to find more programs that are SDG focused. I know the Impact Hub in particular, we have 110 of these organizations across the globe. We have five Impact Hubs here in North America, and they are all connected to this particular work that we're doing around the SDGs. We're all, everything that we're talking about, all the work that we're doing, how we're supporting uh, small business owners, how we're supporting nonprofits that are, you know, starting from inception into just launching their nonprofits. We have them focus solely on these 17 goals. And then for those people that are pitching or looking for funding, what we have seen here at Impact Hub is if you are able to implement some of these uh, 17 goals into your pitch or into your presentation or into your um, into your business plan, you're more likely to, to get approved for some of the funding that's available out there. Because now it's no longer just, hey, I have a business or I have a social impact enterprise that's working to, to do good. It's now I have a social enterprise that's actually aligned with the work that's being right. done by the UN on, on a global level. Thank Does you. That your question? Yep, it sure did. All right. All right. Uh, I don't think I have any more questions, um, but I'm spot on with one more minute. Uh, so again, I just wanted to take some time to thank you guys for having me today. Um, and just continue to do all the work that you're doing. I, I really do hope that you leave this session feeling more inspired. Um, I hope that you leave this in this session feeling like you now have a, a North Star to 10X the work that you're doing because we are all doing such important work in the spaces that we're in. And uh, I just really wanted to create a, 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 a shining light on this particular North Star that is the 17 SDG goals so that we can actually, you know, start putting them into place and help to, to accomplish them by 2030. All right, it's my pleasure. It's so nice to meet all of you, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Akil. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Burgos.